So, yeah, obviously, we're absolutely delighted that everyone's here. Uh, it is our first, and uh, from that perspective, it is very, very exciting. I think uh, in, in putting this together and thinking about it, um, uh, we, we certainly are now planning the next one and start, you know, thinking downstream about what this will mean and what we can do in the future. So um, it's definitely uh, the first one. We think it will be a good one. We may do make the odd mistake on the way through, but so bear with us with that. Um, but I promise uh, next year uh, will be very, very good as well. So, uh, again, see this is where everything's been stolen from me. Um, global participation. Really want to thank everyone for coming here. So there's people from, obviously, Arthur from Brazil. We've got uh, plenty of people from the States and uh, from Europe and from South Africa. And um, as I said last night to, to some of you, I'm so delighted to be, not be the person who is suffering jet lag. and. Uh, I can actually be awake for this for this event. Um, so really appreciate the fact that everyone does come so far away. You can see them in the bottom corner there, um, and it is it is a long way to come for, for this. And I think it it's a little bit of a testament to um, the kind of business that we're trying to build in terms of the partnerships and the relationships that we think are really really critical uh, for Yellowfin going forward. It's not something that we pay lip service to. It is something that we really see as core to our business, um, and it's something that we want to strengthen. One of the real opportunities out of this, and it was mentioned by Pat, is the fact that um, for a long time now, Yellowfin has been the hub. So we've kind of been in the middle of conversations. We've, we've tried to pass things through. And I think this is a real opportunity for everyone to, to build around us and to network around us and not us being the central point um, for discussions. Um, and so I think it's really going to help uh, all of us, uh, your own businesses, ours, uh, if you're a customer from a perspective of, of your peers and networking and finding out what other people do with Yellowfin and how they've extended it and some of the things that they've done. Um, obviously, I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, so when we started this, again, we didn't really think about sponsoring the event, but we had people who wanted to sponsor. So um, again, fantastic. So you know, as proof of that, we do have pens available. Uh, <laughs> and so get some. I've got, obviously, Prometheus. Um, they did point out their website is on the pen, unlike the others, so that's the point of differentiation. Uh, Actin's in black, um, you'll definitely hear more about them, and Westgate. And, and the, the reality is we've worked with all these businesses, um, and uh, certainly from our perspective, again, uh, in terms of sponsorship, one of the reasons we didn't want to do sponsorship originally was we wanted this to be about uh, not being a selling experience, about education and networking, etc. cetera. Um, but I think that what uh, these partners bring is, is really, again, some really great um, uh, technology that fits in with uh, really uh, with Yellowfin and makes a huge difference to the end user experience around Yellowfin. So you'll definitely see more of them. Uh, obviously, I've talked a lot about the opportunities. The biggest one is to network. Um, so it is, as I said, about getting together, uh, talking, sharing ideas, and ultimately removing us from the conversation. Uh, and I don't want to sort of say that we don't want to be part of it, but fundamentally it's, I think it's, it's where we are now in terms of the ability to grow and to, and to understand what we're doing. Uh, the second piece really is to learn. So uh, we've, we've put a lot of thought into the sessions that we've, we've put together. I know some, some people are conflicted about which to go to, um, but again, some of those, the really popular ones we'll do next year, so if you feel you're going to miss out, uh, there's always one next year that, can, that you can attend. But uh, again, take the opportunity. There's some, some really interesting insights, uh, both from a case study perspective. So we've got uh, Macquarie Uni doing their case study. We've got we're seeing what Uligon Uni are doing next. Um, and again, to see see how people are using Elephant, what they do that's different, how they've extended it. And so um, again, there's, there's always something to take away. And I know there's actually quite a few people from Elephant who are saying, well, I want to actually go and do the sessions. I don't particularly want to be talking to people. I want to see what uh, others have to say. So. Uh, obviously, you can meet the team. Um, you know, as Pat did say, we're, we're pretty relaxed, and here's a couple of images of that kind of relaxation in action. Um, but it, again, it is. I think it's worthwhile, from your perspective, to know the people behind the product who sit there and who work on it, and and to develop those relationships again, so that uh, you know the kind of people who are involved. And I think again, one of the things that's really critical to our business is the fact that essentially, for the good the good guys. Um, the staff, we've had them for many, many years. So Peter's up the back has been there essentially since day one. If he'll argue Yellowfin was his idea. Um, but, um, and so again, it's about, that's the kind of business we want to build. We want to know that we have fantastic people who want to stay, who want to work with our partners, who want to deliver really fantastic solutions. Um, 
And lastly, there is a prize for the best elephant tattoo. So if you do feel like going out today and really proving that you love us a lot, then there is something special. I can't tell you what it is. It might not be worth the tattoo. But uh, if you do feel that way inclined, it's available for you. So uh, I highly recommend it. There are a couple of tattoo shops at the end of the street, turn left, next to the Harley Davidson shop. So uh, um, the other thing I suppose that's been asked, and it gets asked quite a bit over time, and, and again from a customer's perspective as well as um, for our partners, you know, why, why Elephant? Why did we come around? And certainly in the early days, I was often asked, why did you bother doing another BI tool? So I thought I'd give you a little bit of the history, a bit of the genesis of it. Um, so firstly, the name. Um, the name wasn't my choice. We're not fishermen. We don't, it wasn't about sushi. It just happened that we were looking for a, a name that had uh, a colour in it, which I don't know why we insisted that it had to have a colour, but it did. Um, it had to be easy to remember, so it couldn't be technical. And so from that, we had a huge list of potential names. And um, then we needed to get a URL, and that brought it down to about one or two. Uh, and the other thing wasn't actually my choice. It was, it was Justin's choice. Um, but again, it's been, I think, a name that's been really good in terms of being able to remember it and, and, and evocative, I suppose, ultimately the brand and, and where we're going. Uh, beyond that, really, I suppose, uh, part of where we saw, so I suppose my background, um, I used to work for National Australia Bank, which is, uh, you know, Burke, just there, large bank on the corner. And um, I was responsible for doing a lot of reporting to the executive team, and I ended up leaving so the business and ending up in the IT in the, in the data warehouse project and, and working with business objects. I didn't mention that brand. but um, and, and during that, so at the time, the bank had 50,000 employees. We bought 300 licenses of business objects uh, because that's all we could afford, being a multinational bank that made billions of dollars in profit. Um, and, um, but it cost us about the project in total by the time I left, it was, a, it was around $40 million we'd spent, so in terms of the data warehousing and the rollout of the 300 licenses. Um, and what struck me at the time was just the, the incredible cost and complexity of what was involved with it. And um, that was the, the, the piece I think that always, always has really driven us, is saying, how do we simplify it? And um, so one of the things you'll know, obviously, Yellowfin making business intelligence easy, we've never said we made it easy, because I don't think you can actually make it easy. I think. It still requires skill sets. It needs people who really think about what they do. And so for us, it's about how do we just take steps out of that process? How over time do we improve it? And so with every iteration, with every release, we're always going back over the core product and actually trying to simplify, take out components of it. And so you know, it's, it's almost embarrassing to go and look at our first version of Yellowfin because uh, really is embarrassing. But, um, and I think almost with every other release, when we start, when we look back 12 rating months to a previous version, we're just delighted with the way it's moving forward. And, and I hope you find that too, that you're seeing that journey with us and you're seeing how we're trying to improve it. A lot of it comes back again down to your feedback as well. Um, so, you know, we may have some, some ideas, like Storyboard as an example, which again actually came from a customer. But um, we do rely so much on our partners and our customers to give us the feedback around what's working, what's not working. Um, certainly some of the, the components that um, Macquarie's been talking about in their session, so like watermarking and sort of, you know, thinking about very large deployments, again, those are ideas that came from our customers. You know, we didn't think of them ourselves, um, but it's, it's what makes Elephant so much better. So if you've got ideas, feel free to keep pushing it our way. Um, so coming back, so that was the idea of cost and complexity. And we started, we started pretty small. We've done it on a shoestring budget. Um, and we started in offices down on Collins Street, tiny little shared offices. And it's really grown since then. And um, our first customer was Cause Chambers Westgarth. And they only migrated off their original version of Yellowfin last year, picking and screaming. Um, and uh, so that was, again, you know, it, was, it was interesting in terms of seeing that from the initial one and, and as we grew. And, and for me, personally, some of the, the bigger deals that we did over time where I couldn't believe that people actually paid for our product. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, in a sense of that you've got major corporates who buy us. And so again, um, you know, that, that is the kind of thing I suppose that excited us to see, yes, we're actually delivering value. People want to buy this product. Um, they're excited by it. And that's really some of the things that drive us in thinking about how we're moving forward so I was looking at the time. Um, so yeah, so we moved out of... Uh, uh, Collins, 
We moved into Queen. Um, some of you especially uh, will know our Queen Street offices again. They were pretty small. Um, and we were very much jammed in there before we finally moved into uh, uh, Elizabeth Street and uh, Melbourne Central there. And again, since we've been there, we've expanded a lot, we've grown. Uh, we've now got people overseas. Uh, and, and certainly from our perspective, we're really wanting to build a global brand. Um, and we think we do have something special to offer. We think the way in which we're uh, approaching the market, not only in terms of product, but in terms of the business that we are, is very, very different. And that's what we want to emphasise ultimately and, and set ourselves apart from a lot of the other, other vendors in the space. So this is just something, again, that I actually saw last year, but I thought was really, really worthwhile and considering. Um, and this was a quote by Mark Smith, um, who is from another analyst firm that I just don't want to mention got the end of the room, but um, really the whole point is that I think as a vendor, um, we need to really consider about how people use information and what they do with information, and whether or not the paradigm that exists, so this, in this example here, simply the dashboard, is, the, is really the best and most appropriate way to deliver information. Um, and that's, again, some of the questions that we continue to ask ourselves at Yellowfin, and you'll see that certainly in my uh, uh, closing session tomorrow where we do talk about uh, what's coming up, what we're thinking, and, and again, try to understand what's really happening with information. So uh, the good example of this is really Storyboard, which came out in November last year, which I'm using now, um, was, was built around the fact that what we saw was a lot of people taking data out of Yellowfin, copying and pasting reports and putting them into PowerPoint. And so we're, what that made us realise is that really the dashboard all was, a, was an intermediary to another mechanism and so we're trying to think about removing those intermediary steps and actually delivering a solution that does help people share and collaborate information end to end. Um, obviously from our perspective you know thinking about the, the whole um, uh, end to end of the other thing uh, I did find this, this great uh, image on the web which kind of means to sort of depicts the sort of, I think, the way BI certainly has been for a very long time. I and mean, there's been a little bit of innovation in the space now, but as I like to say, dashboards haven't changed in 25 years. You know, they've got a little bit more interactive, a little bit more interesting, but fundamentally they're the same metaphor. Um, and I think as vendors globally, we need to rethink about how that works. But from our perspective, where I think we're very, very different is that we do think about the business user. So we think about end users not as data analysts per se, but as people who actually use information to do their job. Uh, we want uh, people to have a really simplified experience, so we want to continue to simplify our product. And that's not to take things out, but to actually, in terms of functionality, but it's to remove steps in the process. So the innovation that we see that, that Yellowfin wants to really be known for is removing all those steps so that people can connect into their data, visualise it very easily, share it very easily, uh, without having to move between products, between uh, applications and modules, etc. And lastly, we want it to be pervasive. So we want organisations to be able to roll out Yellowfin to as many people as they feel they need to, um, you know, to that it suits their needs. And again, that comes back to that, that NAV experience where we had an organisation of 50,000 people and 300 licences. Um, and the real question is why? Why was there not enough value for the, end, for the actual population of at least 20,000 people that I could think of that should have had access to data, but we didn't do it. Um, and so it's really, you know, from our perspective, when we think about BI, yes, the other thing is the kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of the, the presentation layer. There's a lot that goes behind. There's a lot of thinking that goes into delivering great BI. And so part of the sessions that we'll see over the next couple of days is addressing that. So you'll see, you know, obviously uh, around data warehousing, around analytical databases, ETL tools, etc. And they are what is needed to be successful. Uh, you can't just simply walk up with Yellowfin, plonk it onto uh, a server and, hey, presto, you've got dashboards. There is a lot of work that goes into it. And understanding that and being aware of that. For us, beyond that, um, and again, the way we think about BI is that fundamentally 90% of people consume information. Uh, very, very few people actually create uh, content. And so um, you'll see from us, certainly, our, our strategic direction is really about the consumption piece, is how do we make consumption very, very easy and intuitive and everywhere. So regardless of what device you're using, where you are, you can consume your information in a way that makes sense to you. 
And again, uh, compared to sort of the gener generality of the industry, you'll see that most vendors will focus on the analysts where we're really about the BI consumer. Um, and so that, that is our fundamental focus, and it's growing in terms of its piece. Lastly, in terms of, I suppose, how we think about the actual application, um, so you know, people, when you look at the work that's gone into Yellowfin, it's now 10 years of development, and we did, uh, when was it? Uh, earlier this year, we sort of did a retrospective. We looked at all the versions of Yellowfin we've had previously. And it's interesting to note that most of the functionality, all the core functionality, has been in Yellowfin for an awful long time now. Um, but we keep going back to the user interface and we keep refining the user interface. And it's, it's sort of around these, these key points that is around engagement and interaction, how to get people interested in using information. Um, you know, I saw a quote recently where um, that a vendor was saying they have, on average, one, a user logs in once a day and uses it for five minutes. Uh, we'd really like to improve on that. We'd like to have a much, much higher engagement within the application using it. And that means it has to look and feel really easy. It has to be simple. People want to use it. They don't want to battle the technology. So that's important for us. Uh, performance is critical. Um, so in all of our deployments, uh, we certainly know that if it's not fast, people aren't using it. Again, there's, there's many ways to deal with it, but um, certainly uh, around analytical databases, the way we structure your data, very, very important. And so those, those, just to give you some insight, I suppose, the way we think about our product and, and, and how we, we manage it. So, and lastly, ultimately it's all about collaboration. And Pat touched on it, it is about how do people actually use the information, share it and enjoy it uh, and work with it. And it is, you know, obviously it's something that internal in the way in which we run our business, we, we are very uh, collaborative. We try to be as transparent as possible with all of our partners, with all of our customers. Um, and so it's not just about the product, but about the business as well. Uh, certainly this year, uh, we've had uh, a really, sort of the last 12 months have been fantastic. We've had some great recognition uh, in terms of, uh, from a whole range of vendors. Um, the ones where we've got detail for is uh, how Dresden's Wisdom of Crowd Study. So again, this is a, a survey that is done um, annually, and there's another one out at the moment. If you feel free, we can uh, let you know where to go. But uh, in terms of filling out the survey, but again, what it does show is how does Yellowfin perform, and we're the blue line versus the green is our peers, and red is the industry average. And what really excites me about this is that we are so much ahead of the industry in terms of the way we deal with people. So the top half is, is really sort of sales, uh, product functionality, uh, support, and, and services. And I think, you know, I, I do look at the survey, and we do look at the survey, and every year we do try and improve upon it. So it is important for us uh, to understand what the thinking is, how people perceive us, so that we can react to that and actually change the things that we do. But again, um, I think a real testament to, to the team about how well we're performing this. Um, the second one that I really do like as well is the Bark survey, uh, so it's a BI Industry Survey 12, and this one was just on innovation, and you can see Yellowfin ranked slightly above uh, our peer group in this, um, just marginally, but it's certainly something that we, again, we want to be known for, we want to be seen as, as an organisation that's prepared to take risks uh, and try new things in the interface. So, a good example of that is the discussion piece we did a, a couple of years ago, which probably not the best piece of uh, product we ever developed, but we did learn from that, and I think what you'll see coming out uh, that response to that is, is just so much better and so much more interesting. But again, it's about taking risks, it's about trying new things and seeing the uptake rate of that. And so this is just a quote, again, about just generally, so uh, about Yellowfin, about next generation, etc. And having said that, I'm not really here to sell Yellowfin because you've all probably already bought it. So, um, I don't really have to flog it too hard. Um, but really, what's important for today is uh, enjoy the next two days. There's been uh, an awful lot of work from, from uh, our guys in putting this together. Um, there's a lot of interesting uh, sessions uh, that, are, that are worthwhile taking part of. And uh, specifically, I think the next two uh, keynotes, uh, Ian uh, from, from Gartner, uh, you know, I was at the Gartner event earlier this um, uh, last week. Uh, again, a fantastic event in terms of really general overview of, of what's happening in the VI industry, what are the trends, what are the things to think about that are beyond just Yellowfin. Uh, but um, Ian certainly got a lot of interesting things to say about that. 
uh, followed by um, Wollongong University's case study as well, which I think, again, very, very interesting in terms of how people are using it and what they're trying to do to extend the product. Uh, but lastly, uh, have fun. So enjoy the next two days. I certainly know we will. And don't forget your pens. They're available. Um, so <laughs> And uh, enjoy. So with that, I'll hand over to Pat.